Hey, my sweet goat, so Ubisoft just dropped a bit of pre-alpha gameplay for Beyond Good and Evil 2, and it isn't anything like you'd expect. I don't know if you've ever played the first Beyond Good and Evil game, but it had a pretty uh, linear story uh, while giving off the sense of being open-ended and it was a single player experience throughout. The world that was presented was relatively open and unique and you played as this character named Jade who was just a uh, very endearing protagonist. What we know so far about Beyond Good and Evil 2 is that it's gonna be an online game with drop-in, drop-out co-op and it's gonna take place in a vast open star system with planets to explore. Now I remember loving the first game but I barely remember the story outside of the fact that you take some photographs of cute animals and that it ends on a cliffhanger. So I really don't have a lot to base my expectations on beyond a sustained sense of wonder that the original game had imparted upon me. But look, despite all that, I would like to provide some commentary on the gameplay that was shown to us. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe somebody, maybe somebody at Ubisoft is watching me. Maybe they're watching me right now. They're saying, what does this cutie pie got to say? Uh, and yeah, maybe they'll take some of my points into consideration. Although I'm quite certain that they're trying to make the best game that they can possibly make. Because I learned that the first game wasn't a commercial success, so they probably want to, you know, make sure that this franchise hits home this time around. So they got a balance appeasing the cult following while also kind of opening up to this completely brand new market that's come up in the last 10 years of gaming. So how would we just go ahead and start with the concerns? Because I really would love to get those out of the way. My primary concern with this title is the fact that it's an online open world game that takes place in a vast star system with planets to explore, which all sounds great on paper, but in reality can quite easily lead to a very dull gaming experience. I've lost count of how many open world single player games I played that feel like giant art galleries with very little to do between player hubs and missions. Online games try to subdue that feeling of tedium by providing you repetitive tasks in exchange for better gear or items, be they functional or cosmetic, but that feeling always ends up creeping up on you. Now this is an alpha build of the game so I do expect things to improve, but if you take a look at some of the gameplay you can easily spot vast amounts of nothingness in the world. The heart of the main city definitely appears to be vibrant, populated, layered, and wonderful. But how much of that wonder will carry over to the exploration of the vast open world that Ubisoft has set to create for online play? Will the game be primarily instance-based, favoring a fast travel system over the encouragement of actual exploration of the game world? Will their economy favor microtransactions in lieu of invested game time? Will Beyond Good and Evil 2 feel like a chore and another addition to a sea of online games with dwindling player bases that exist today? Will Beyond Good and Evil 2 really only be a Beyond Good and Evil game in name and name alone. I guess only time will tell, but it's very clear that Ubisoft is at the very least attempting to promise a feature-rich experience that varies from player to player. From the gameplay they've showcased, it's very clear that this is going to play like an RPG, so it's imperative that they keep the end game in mind in order to avoid a steep player drop-off. It's the most obvious thing to say, but since so many developers seem to drop the ball in that regard, I can't help but say it again and again and again. Okay, so now what about the good stuff? We gotta talk about the good stuff, guys. We gotta talk about the good stuff. Beyond Good and Evil is finally getting the attention that it deserves. It even has the original director on board, and guess what, yo, he also directed Rayman. It sounds so weird saying directed Rayman. Anyway, he was he was the dude that was behind the project on Rayman. He was the creator of Rayman. He's made he, he made Rayman. And look, at the end of the day, it's a video game. And video games are good. I feel like I'm gonna make this point multiple times. The fact that we're sitting here talking about video games is amazing. You pay $70 for hours of entertainment, sometimes even when the game is bad. So even if Beyond Good and Evil 2 ends up being poo-poo, okay? Yeah, yeah having that as a problem in your life is, is a blessing, honestly. But look, enough about that. Let's just go ahead and celebrate the nice things that Beyond Good and Evil 2 has to offer. On the surface, we can see that you'll have the option to look the way you want, be it your character or your ship, and I imagine that items and weapons will be customizable too. And while I'm aware that this is to be expected of online open world games, it does look like Ubisoft has gone to great lengths to really allow players to express themselves in this title. Another thing that I absolutely love about Beyond Good and Evil 2 is the art direction. I specifically love the eastern influence that's present throughout the main city, aptly named Ganesha City, and I think that the art style strikes a decent balance between being cartoony and photorealistic. Aerial combat looks responsive and fluid, and I imagine that there will be a lot of it present throughout the game on release. It's also really nice to see that players can explore things on their own, with distance between them not being an issue at all. You could be out in space while your buddy hangs out in town while they're at shops or whatever. The way I see it is that if the developers deliver on their promises and provide us a world, or in this case, world 
worlds teeming with adventure, I'm certain I'll sink many hours into it alongside quite a few of my friends. But until that happens, I'm gonna remain cautiously optimistic and I highly recommend you do too. All right, so like at the beginning of this week, I posted about this on Twitter and you guys reacted to it. So I figured I'd go through some of your reactions and uh, get the ball rolling on a bit of healthy discussion, you know, kind of get you to, to, to maybe commit to, to making your mark down in the comment section below. Maybe at that point, YouTube will realize that my, uh, my channel is, uh, is, is one that's uh, worth, uh, worth sharing, sharing the shit out of. So Brian Jedi 82 says, it looks interesting, but very far removed from the original. It's still a game that I'm looking forward to, but it's not the sequel I want. That's totally a normal opinion to have. I'm not sure if it's a sequel that I want, but I'm interested. I'm really interested. They've definitely got my attention. I'm going to go ahead and see what, what they have to offer. I do already like this type of game. So if this type of game ends up being good in the Beyond Good and Evil universe, it'll be chill. I'm pretty sure I'll appreciate it. Now this guy, Kevin the Drinker, clearly he must have been drinking. Kevin, have you been drinking? Okay. Before you wrote this how much did you drink let me know okay kevin they've already outright fucking lied about this game the first time they show it at e3 they talk about how it's a prequel set long before jade i don't remember this stuff so i don't really remember any of this stuff i've completely forgotten about this i'm not saying that it's not true i'm just saying i completely forgot about it uh then some lib <laughs> <laughs> then some lib c li <laughs> Then some lib c lesbian talks about diversity and other garbage. <laughs> Dude, you gotta chill out, Kevin, man. You gotta fucking not just chill out on the drinks, bro. Chill on the drinks. You can't be using that language, bro. Come on, man. You gotta, you gotta win some hearts here. You're not gonna win any hearts with that attitude. Next time they show it at E3, Paige and a young evil Jade appears. Yeah, I remember. I think I remember that part. That was, uh, that was at the end of the, uh, the, the E3 trailer. Look, I don't know what to tell you, Kevin. It's, I, I don't know what you're upset about, bro. Like, oh man, you're so, <laughs> you're so aggressive, dude. You gotta chill out. Look, dude. I think it's gonna be an alright experience. It could be nice. It really could be nice. They. I like the setting, you know, I hope this video that you've seen maybe convinced you a little bit more, but dude, <laughs> dude you gotta chill, bro, you gotta chill. Jeremiah, official Vink, he says, uh, I fear it's going to be filled to the brim with microtransactions like pretty much every other Ubisoft game since 2017. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, dude, if you play uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which happens to be another Ubisoft game. Uh, I know that it came out before 2017, but it's got a pretty good monetization model, I think, personally. And uh, so maybe, maybe, or maybe not, I don't know. It, this is a very valid concern to have, you know, all these companies, they got these board members that are like, we gotta hit the margins, we gotta hit the margins. Gotta get the margins up, we need them up by 1%, we gotta charge people. That's what happens, okay? That's literally why microtransactions exist because of those guys. Those guys that are stressing about more money all the time. I'm pretty sure that if it was all the creatives and the people that actually create the game that's worth playing, they'd be like, yo, f off. <laughs> off dude f off we want to make a fun game jamie o'halligan he says the flight driving mechanics look pretty stale hopefully this game isn't just a pretty tech demo uh you know i i hope so too but i don't think that they look stale i think they just look arcadey and functional this game is supposed to be like i think they're supposed to have an emphasis on the exploration it's not supposed to be like a like a sim or anything like that i'm not sure if you're expecting that i'm just expecting something arcadey something that you know plays like uh uh you know, something that just plays and feels like a game. Eric Dijkstra says, online open world game just means repetitive content that they hope you will look past because you're playing the game with friends. It really goes beyond the tasks because a, a good online open world game ends up being uh, a lot about the social structures that are built around the actual gameplay. You know, all the stuff, the the ascension, the the the... the you know, just the desire of having a good character. So if the grind can be made enjoyable, it isn't that bad of a, a bad, a bad of an experience, even though you will know that you're actively participating in a grind. That's how I believe a really good online open world game is. Ryan, nonbred1307 says, just to clarify, you can play the game single player and go through the story by yourself. However, you have the option to do co-op with friends. Thanks for replying, Ryan. Look, I, I figured as much when I was watching the gameplay, but my concern isn't really with the, the actual story or anything like that. I mean, the story, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to enjoy by yourself and take in as much of it as you want by yourself. Uh, but when they add an online component, you're not just expecting the option for drop in, drop out co-op in this, in this kind of world. You're also expecting for an option to explore and, and go off the beaten path. And, 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 uh, 
And if they don't deliver on this, I feel like people will be disappointed because they're going to come to this game for different reasons. They're, they're going to come to the game either to power through the story themselves or to kind of make their own story, you know? So uh, I'm hoping that, 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 uh, that, you know, they'll be able to provide this, this environment. All right, my goats, that's it for now. Thanks a ton for watching this video. As usual, hit the like button. If you're completely brand new here, probably go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to stay notified by also hitting the bell icon alongside it. And if you really, really love this video and you want to see more of its kind, feel free to go ahead and check out my Patreon where you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. That's it. I'm out. I don't want to bug you anymore. Have a good one. Take it easy. Bye.